My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of hormone replacement therapy, HRT, and the effects of HRT on the heart. This is quite a controversial topic, and therefore I thought I would try and do a video on it. Now, this video is entitled HRT and the Heart, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Okay, so the first thing to say is that the arrival of menopause in a woman's life can be particularly distressing, uh, mentally, emotionally, but also physically. We know that as hormones decline, the, in the incidence of certain conditions is increased. Uh, these conditions include things like hot flashes, increased, um, there's an increased risk of osteoporosis with uh, menopause, there's an increased risk of Alzheimer's uh, with uh, menopause, uh, vaginal atrophy, and also cardiovascular disease. To try and combat this decline of hormones, the FDA approved um, a medication called Premarin, estrogen replacement, at the beginning of the 20th century. And this was really for the treatment of hot flashes, which, is, which can be very distressing for patients. Now, in the 70s, it became apparent that if you were giving people unopposed estrogen therapy, if you were replacing their estrogen, then there seemed to be an increased incidence of endometrial cancer. And HRT became very unfavorable because of this risk. But subsequently, as researchers you know, did more trials, what they discovered was that if you reduce the dose of estrogen and then combined it with progesterone, then the risk of endometrial cancer fell. And once again, on the basis of this, everyone became very buoyant and HRT uh, in the form of combined therapy, estrogen and progesterone became very popular again. In people who'd had a hysterectomy, you know, their uteruses were out, uh, you could use estrogen only HRT. But in people who had a uterus intact, it was recommended because of this risk of endometrial cancer that estrogen combined with progesterone. Now, what about the heart? We know that the incidence of cardiovascular events increases in postmenopausal women. There was an interesting study called the SWAN study, and what they found was that in women with hot flashes, there was a, there was a higher incidence of subclinical uh, cardiovascular disease, there was more calcification in the blood vessels uh, of the big vessels, the aorta, compared to women who didn't have menopausal symptoms. And given this observation, researchers became interested in trying to work out whether this was a manifestation of the decline in hormones. And what they wanted to know was whether replacement of hormones by giving people HRT could in fact prevent or arrest the subclinical cardiovascular disease and in some way prove protective. Researchers started doing studies, observational studies mainly, and what they found was that yes, that you know, when um, women were given HRT, the risk of heart disease started uh, was less. Uh, the, these were observational studies. So based on this, it was decided that we do a proper study, a randomized control study, because observational studies study associations. And what you want to do is you want to try and solidify that evidence by doing a randomized control trial. So in 1998, a study was undertaken to better study the effects of HRT on common causes of mortality and morbidity in women, such as cardiovascular disease. This study, this was a very famous study at the time, it was called the Women's Health Initiative Study. Uh, and in this particular study, they took uh, 16,608 women who had intact uteruses and they were given either a combination of estrogen progesterone or placebo. And then they took another uh, 10,739 women who didn't have a uterus and they just gave them either estrogen or placebo. And the results were published after about 5.2 years. And it's, they suggested that in women who had intact uteri, women who hadn't had a hysterectomy, there was in fact an increase in coronary disease and an increase in breast cancer. But there was a reduction in osteoporosis and colon cancer. 
And on the basis of these results, the trial was stopped early. Everyone got very worried that HRT, in fact, was increasing the risk of heart disease and breast cancer. And this really set out a, a message in the media that HRT was a terrible thing and everyone stopped prescribing HRT in women. These, so this was the group of patients who had intact uteruses. There was another arm to the study which was looking at women who had had a hysterectomy. So they, they didn't have a uterus and they were being given estrogen versus placebo. And in those uh, uh, patients, what they found was that there was a small increased risk of strokes, but there didn't appear to be any benefit in terms of cardiovascular risk or breast cancer, although there was no increase in cardiovascular disease or breast cancer either. Uh, but again, consistent with previous studies, there was a benefit in terms of osteoporosis, osteoporosis-related fractures and colon cancer. Nevertheless, even though these were more reassuring results, the message was still that HRT was not such a great thing and it, should, it could be used maybe sparingly only for those patients who had very, very troublesome hot flashes, but should definitely not be used in women who were asymptomatic and postmenopausal. A lot of people wanted to try and make sense of this data. People argued that the study itself was flawed and what became very apparent was that a large number of the patients in this study, this Women's Health Initiative study, were over 10 years past menopause. And the question therefore was, could results found in women who were over 10 years post menopause be applied in women who were just around menopause or who were just within a few months or years of menopause? And therefore, a reanalysis was taken and more data was accrued and, every, and a bunch of researchers put it all together and did some statistical computation. And what they found was that actually uh, in women who were younger, so between 50 and 59, women who were within 10 years of menopausal symptoms, it appeared that there was a reduction in heart disease and death from heart disease. So it seemed that if you gave HRT in women soon after they developed menopause or in women who were younger who were symptomatic as well with their symptoms or heart flashes, in fact actually in those patients it did appear that there was a benefit to the heart from HRT. It was only uh, in older women, you know, women who were more than 10 years um, past menopause that it seemed that there was a problem with the HRT and the fact that the HRT increased the risk of heart disease. So the problem was this, this reanalysis was interesting, but it wasn't as heavily publicized and therefore not many people got to find out about it. And because of that, um, still a lot of women who have very bad symptoms from menopause are still not prescribed HRT because of this concern about heart disease. However, the current scientific bottom line is that HRT is beneficial in women who are symptomatic. Uh, with hot flashes or other symptoms uh, as long as HRT is prescribed within 10 years of menopause. In these people, not only will it reduce hot flashes, but it may reduce the risk of osteoporosis, it may reduce the risk of colon cancer, and it may reduce the risk of heart disease. Now, here is a summary of those people who may benefit from HRT and in whom HRT is uh, probably a good choice. Okay, The first thing to say is given all the conflicting data, HRT is no longer just prescribed to prevent things. Okay, It's not prescribed in an asymptomatic patient, a patient who is perimenopausal or postmenopausal, who is not getting hot flashes, who has no other symptoms. HRT is not no longer routinely prescribed to reduce cardiovascular disease, osteoporotic fractures, etc. However, in those patients who have got symptoms, um, and who are within 10 years of menopause or under the age of 60, HRT will help. And in those patients, uh, the symptoms are things like if you have hot flashes, HRT can help with that. Um, if you have sleep disturbance, HRT can help with that. If you have mood lability or depression, HRT combined with an antidepressant like an SSRI can help with that. Joint aches and pain, 
HRT can help with that. And vulvovaginal atrophy, HRT can help with that. Now, HRT is not, however, recommended in patients who have a history of breast cancer, uh, patients who are known to have heart disease, patients who've had previous blood clots or previous strokes, patients who have active endometrial cancer, patients who have active liver disease, and patients who have unexplained vaginal bleeding. So, I hope you found this useful as HRT is such a controversial topic, no one really knows. I wanted really uh, to try and do a video on this. The first thing to say is that I don't have a huge expertise in this field, uh, but I was keen to educate myself and I was also keen to be able to provide my patients um, with a more informed opinion and that's why I did this video. Um, I would love to know what you thought of this, was it helpful? And once again, as always, thank you for all that you do for me.